Okay, today I'm sitting in the uh, Shack penthouse uh, with all the repeaters again with the Agilient E4411B Spectrum Analyzer and we're tuning our uh, duplexer cans right here. It's a model WP639BP bandpass band reject circuit duplex by Wacom. Um, preliminary testing showed that they were, they were quite out of tune so I'm going to try and show how to tune duplexers as I learned it um, myself using just a uh, spectrum analyzer with a uh, tracking generator and a uh, source uh, thing so you can tune filters and stuff. It, uh, it's pretty awesome. So of course we have our spectrum analyzer here. Um, this in particular is the E44411B by Ag Ag Agilent. Here is our duplexer um, right here with all the jumper wires. I think the length of these cables have to be a certain uh, certain length to compensate for velocity factor but just to get a good idea I didn't really take that into consideration at this side we have a dummy load it's a 50 ohm uh, heath kit dummy load that on 144 megahertz gives us an SWR of about 1.3 to 1 um, it's, it's best to have one that doesn't have any reflective power at all but you know it's what we've got and it gives us a pretty good idea of uh, what the filter characteristics look like. So the setup looks like this. I have the uh, the uh, antenna jack in the back here connected to RF out and the input connected to the RX in uh, of the uh, duplexer. It's this RX2 receiver and that's just going to test these two cans which are the um, basically the uh, the transmit path transmit reject uh, RX uh, pass uh, filters and the other side the transmitter is connected to our, our 50 ohm dummy load so once I got all the settings set up on the, the spectrum analyzer I have this kind of waveform and what we see here is two markers one is at 144.850 and the other one's down here at 145.450 this is the advertised uh, um, frequency of the repeater 145.45 and it has a uh, minus offset of minus 6 so the other marker goes at 144.850 and as you can see here it's passing the RX and rejecting the the uh, transmit and you can see minus 73 dBm below reference which is right now we're putting a 0 dBm signal into it which is about a milliwatt and the other side says minus 2.0 dBm loss and so when the basically that's the insertion loss of the duplexer um, resolution bandwidth is 30 kilohertz so if we lower the bandwidth down to like one or something we can get a much more defined uh, graph which will I guess give you more accurate readings Let's see minus 1.42 on the marker for reception and minus 75 for transmit uh, block now I'll turn the resolution bandwidth back up to about 30 kilohertz to show a faster waveform. And we'll show you what the knobs and things do on the duplexer. You'll see here there's four knobs on top. And these, they, these I have no idea what they actually control, but they make the waveform do different things. And then there's also two uh, tuning stubs here. and they're capa These are basically like co just capacitor filters, and, and these go in and out and uh, do other stuff. And pardon me for my absolute ignorance, but that's, a, that's all I know right now. I'm only two years into a double E degree, so one of these days I'll figure it out. But let's say I wanted to move this knob. What, what does moving this knob do? We'll watch this screen. There. See that? See that? I'm moving it clock, counterclockwise, and it's moving it right. Clockwise, and moving it, it's moving it left. So that's what that does. And the one in the back, what happens when I move that? Well... That moves that little hump, a little clockwise and counterclockwise moves it to the left, or clockwise moves it to the left. Now what happens when I move these tuning stubs? Well, let's watch again. If I move this uh, closest one to me, it moves it. And when I pull it out, it goes to the right. When I push it in, it goes to the left some more. So we'll put it back. Now this, this one that's farthest from me, when I pull it out, range when I pull it out, moves it to the right a little bit when I push it in moves it to the left a little bit so that's what that does in a nutshell and so what you do to tune these is you just kinda and this is by no means the way to do it but what I did is just, just push them in and out and 
got the markers to go as low as they could go, <laughs> uh, and the and the upper one to go as high as it can go. So it's just a trial and error process. And the problem is that when you tune the receive filter, um, it it'll change the characteristics of the transmit filter as well. So there's there's a lot to be done. Once you have an accurate looking waveform uh, generated generated, you you uh, then will change the wiring to where you will be tuning the transmit side rather than the receive side. So let's do that real quick. Basically what I'm going to do is swap this with this and vice versa. And so they're going to be flipped. Alright, now that I've done that, you can see now that the RX is connected to the dummy load and the TX is connected to the spectrum analyzer. And so what we have here is an inverse looking waveform. The first marker is now 144 to 85 which is uh, blocking the reception, which is blocking the receive side of this. The second marker is a 144.845, uh, which is passing the transmit. And so this is good. I've already tuned it, and you can see that the markers are dead on. And when I move things around a little bit, you can see that they kind of uh, wobble. That's because the connectors aren't all the way in. Um, and so that's one good thing. Always use high quality connectors and make sure they're on good. And so after the trial and error tuning process, I took down a bunch of notes and I took a bunch of pictures and I took a bunch of video and now I have a good idea of what, these, uh, what this duplexer is gonna do when I plug it into the re repeater. It's gonna work.